Hi, I'm Don Whitaker. I'm here today to talk to you about the benefits of the modern rotational golf swing. Today we're going to take a look at the differences between the traditional hands and arms driven golf swing versus the pivot and rotational golf swing using the body. We're going to take a look at the benefits that are there in this movement and what you can take out of it to help your game and hopefully give you some more consistency, maybe a little bit more distance as well. So we'll take a look at it and get stuck in. The traditional swing or the swing that was about when I first turned pro or particularly when I was a junior and was common practice taught all of the time was one that was used kind of like by the Nick Faldo type era. Now things have changed since then with obviously the advent of biomechanics and people understanding how the body works and functionality. So we're just going to take a quick look at what was considered standard back then and you know for me everyone was always teaching we had the first parallel where the club had to be parallel to the feet and parallel to the ball to target line here. There was never any mention really of whether the body moved to get it here. You just got the club into that position. Okay, so we've even got this big tennis racket on the shaft here. It just highlights where the club is, make it nice and simple to show. Then what we're then going to do is the second position from here was you simply turn to the top and at the top you got the club parallel to the target line and parallel to the floor. Okay. It didn't really matter whether the arms were a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Generally, it was a little bit more up with the arms, if anything. We tend to see more upright swings in general because the arms would have to go a little bit more up to get it into this position. Then from here, the club was kind of dropped down into this position here with a little bit of body movement and a little bit of lateral shift, but it was all about making sure you got it into the slot, as it was kind of called. Okay, then from here, as you got it there, it was very much a release the club and let the forearms cross. So as we can see here, that from that position, as those forearms are crossing, there is a massive changeover rate from the heel to the toe of the club. So the toe is crossing over very, very quickly. This was traditionally what was used. So it was then from here, obviously got to this position, and then you just turned and carried that to the finish. Okay, and the finish looked quite different to how it does now. The golf shaft was always a little bit more kind of at an angle to the ground rather than parallel to the ears. We look at the Faldo things that he did in kind of the mid 90s, you know, not the late 80s where I thought it was probably closer to what we see now. But in the mid 90s, he was very much looking for supreme control of the golf ball, hitting it really, really solid, getting it in play and being a master tactician around the golf course. And this is what everyone was aiming for. You know, we had the outliers in that area, you know, your John Daly's and your Davis Love, but really they were very long, whereas everybody else was kind of in and around where Faldo is. But everything changed in 97 when Tiger won the Masters. Don't forget, Faldo won it in 96, Tiger came along in 97. And as an example, on 13, Faldo hit a superb two iron in 96 against Faldo, ball above the feet, great shot into the green. Well, the year after Tiger's blown it straight over the corners, knocking eight iron in. So the game had just dramatically changed, you know, and what he, Tiger took it to a whole new level, okay, and then everybody tried to catch up. But the likes of the Faldo era, who was kind of just managing the ball around the course, very, very tactical, that golf game quickly just fell off the wayside because he won the Masters in 96, but really by 99, he'd finished because his game just wouldn't stand up to what the new modern tests were going to be because he just didn't hit it far enough and didn't have the tools in his game to enable him to compete, essentially. So what we're going to do is we're going to get stuck in in a moment of what the difference are between the two and hopefully how this can really start to help your game. So we're now going to compare what is classed as like the traditional move or, you know, the classic first move. So what obviously I used to see was that everyone was teaching, get straight in here, first move. Club shaft parallel to the feet, parallel to the ball to target line as the first position with the toe more than likely pretty up in the air. Okay. Now, when we take a look at this, the problem that I have with this is that if you want to try and square the club from there, okay, let's turn the body deliver it back to impact, that club face is open. So I'm going to have to do something with my hands to square that club back up because it's already out of sync relative to me. So it's out of balance, out of sequence to where I am. Now, 
if I take it back, what is traditional class now, or the new move, is one piece takeaway right here. So club is matching me. So the club face is parallel to my spine and perpendicular to the arc. So I hit square to the arc it's gone back on. Well, from here, if I just turn back, the club's come straight back to square. So for me, that's just a very easy, reliable way to get the club face back on the ball. I get loads of people getting this wrong because they've been taught to do this. Well, to return that back to square, they've got to do that. Well, that's never going to work reliably. You look at the guys now on tour, they're all taking it back in that one-piece movement. You know, Duffner is the classic best at it, okay? He actually lags it the other way. But you look at Jason Day, you look at Rory, they do a great job of making that one-piece takeaway. Okay, DJ's a bit of an outlier, he very much separates those arms away. But we'll get more onto what he does later on that can benefit you in your game. So now what we're going to do is have a look at, little look at the top of the backswing. So the top of the backswing's always been up, right up here. Okay, club shaft parallel to the floor, parallel to target line. Left arm would traditionally be quite high, okay, and upright. Now, I had a problem with ever trying to do that in my game. You know, I always swung it quite flat as I'm slightly vertically challenged, as you can see. So what happened was, for me, I couldn't get any distance out of my body when I did that. You know, I'd hit it absolutely nowhere. So as a kid, I always used to get told I swung it a bit flat. Probably still do swing it a little bit flat. But my arms are actually slightly shorter for me than my height. So I've put my wingspan out like this. So Vitruvian man, I've got a small arm span, whereas I've got people who have got a long arm span. So what we're looking at is, at the top of the backswing, we're trying to get left arm parallel to the shoulder plane. Okay, so left arm parallel to the shoulder plane is very classically seen now in all the guys on tour because what we're looking at is the shoulders here are at 90 degrees to the axis which is the spine now we know in physics that an object rotates at its fastest and most efficient at 90 degrees to the axis okay so the left arm matching that means that that is matching up with those axes so it's going to be pretty reliable to square the club the guy with the slightly long arms can be a little bit above plane. The guy with shorter arms can be very slightly below. So that's where the individuality will come into it. So it's just down to making sure that you know what is right for you. Obviously not everybody is Da Vinci's Vitruvian man, where perfect arm span to height matches. But what we are looking for is to try and get that left arm as closely matched as we can to that um, shoulder plane at the top. What this does is, it matches the arms and body, and what we see is, if you have a look at two of the people I've already mentioned, Jason Day and Rory, this ones have got shorter in the last three, four years. Yeah, they're in it further, and they're turning the shoulders more. So what they've got is they've got their body and their arms match so much better. So that is meaning that they're then able to really make an aggressive downswing, really hit it almost as hard as they want with the body, and the arms and the club are always going to come flying through with the body. They're not having to do anything to slow down, speed up various body parts to let the club catch up because it's already in a great position right here. So you tend to see a very wide arm swing here, huge shoulder turn. You can take a look at Adam Scott. He does a fantastic job of this as well. Nice and wide at the top, massive shoulder turn, always got the club in balance and in front of him. And a lot of people would class that as probably one of the best golf swings in the world, arguably. Now, what we're then looking at is the next thing is we get, we've got a slightly different sequence coming down, or not massively different, but it's a little bit more aggressive with the body. Whereas before, you, you just have to let the arms drop a little bit. It's not as much like that right now. But once we get into the delivery position right here, what we're then looking at is Traditionally, it was kind of cross those hands over. Now, the overtaking rate of the heel to the toe was so quick that the ball is only on the face for four ten thousandths of a second. So if you think about that just for one moment, you know, it's hardly on there at all. So if that club face is changing rapidly at that moment, you're going to really, really struggle with timing issues starting the ball online. Now, I'm just going to grab the baseball bat right here. So, as you can see, the baseball bat's got two colours on it. Okay, so this is a great way to explain the crossover rate and how the club is going to be delivered. I use this a lot to demo and explain things. Okay, so, so great to get after the customer who hasn't paid the bill. 
only joking. Right, okay. So what we've got is, so here's the delivery position. And as I'm looking there, I can see both colours perfectly. If I look at the old way of releasing the club, so just a huge change over there. Now, I can't see both colours. I can see the red. Toes down. That doesn't mean I won't have squared it at the bottom because there's lots of guys with huge amounts of talent and ability to make that work. I just don't see the average player being able to do that on a day-to-day -day reliable basis. So what we're looking at is when the club is here, then we're rotating the body, okay? So the right elbow stays on the side of the body, the club is coming through, but the balance of the colours is the same. So impact, both colours are matched. Post impact, both colours are matched. Here, both colours are matched, okay? If I do it towards you guys here, both colours are matched to this point now. Now here's where the kind of the toe takes over. There's more energy in the club head than there is in me, okay? So my body's decelerated, providing some speed to the club head. So it will go like this. So this is a release, but as I look at it here, I'm now looking back at both colours. You'd see it from this position, I am seeing both colours as you can see right here. I'm looking at them both equally. But that club face is released. So the body's releasing the club and it's working with physics to square it on a reliable basis. Means that I don't have to slow my pivot down at all. Consciously that is, because it does slow down, but it ha consciously slow it down in order to let the hands square the club. So I've got lots of videos already out there on the release that are really in-depth stuff on it. So please take a look at that if you want some more information on exactly how that release is gonna work. But as you can see right there, the ball's not on the face for very long, and we want that club reacting and moving with the body, which means that we haven't got a lot of change in club face due to the way that it's matched right through here, okay? So that's what's gonna help your game a lot, right? But when I first turned pro, the ball flight laws were very, very different to what they are now, okay? It was, when I did my PGA exams and after that, before Trackman came out, the ball flight laws were the opposite, polar opposite to what they are now. So right now, everyone is saying, it is the face that sends it and the path that bends it. Well, it used to be the path that sends it and the face that bends it. So hence the reason, because people believe it was the face that bent the ball in the air, i.e. made it draw or fade. Well, if I change this over, I either do that to draw it or I go like this to fade it. That's gonna be how I hit the draws and fades, which was why traditionally everyone who hit a fade said, you know, it was when I hit the fade, I don't hit it very far. Whereas we know for a fact that the release rate of heel to toe on a draw and fade is exactly the same. All that's changed is the geometry. In other words, the arc and the angle of that circle relative to the ball, that's just changing the flight in the air, okay? So that's so different, so that hence the reason that people are able to play with the release that's the same for the draw and the fade, and not having to use these hands and arms, okay? So that is why the modern way for the release is so very, very different. I think there's some really good stuff out there on this. You Hopefully you'll find that and like it on my channel. So take a look at it. I think we could help you quite a lot with that. Really hope you've enjoyed that video. Something that I've got a lot of passion about in terms of trying to get the message out there in terms of what's going to help you with your game. It's been because of the advent of technology and science, obviously we're seeing a lot of changes in what is being used from a technology standpoint, whether that's clubs, track man, video, et cetera, et cetera. It's proving that the most efficient way is kind of using that body. Really hope you found it useful. There's lots of information on my channel, on my website, on all my social media to do with areas of the game that I really have got a lot of passion about to do with the rotation and the body and consistency that can really help your game. I hope you found it useful. So please subscribe to the channel if you have. If you've enjoyed it, we've got loads more great content coming your way. Hopefully get in contact with you soon. Look at all the information below, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Thanks for watching and speak with you again soon.